Now, finally, move on to silly mistakes. This bothers and affects a lot of students in chemistry and physics. And most commonly, silly mistakes are related to calculations. You may have written down the wrong working out. You may have typed the equation or calculation into the calculator incorrectly. It could also be non-calculation related. For example, in physics, you may have forgotten the direction or the correct unit for a vector quantity. And what's frustrating is that for most students, they find it difficult to correct and avoid silly mistakes in exam conditions. Now, if this applies to you, this is some of the things that you can do to minimize and reduce the number of marks that you lose to silly mistakes. When you're going through your past exam papers, if you've made a silly mistake in a given question, I want you to identify specifically what is a silly mistake? Is it something calculation related? And if it is calculation related, what is it? For example, in chemistry, is it because you wrote down the wrong power when you're performing equilibrium constant calculations? And I want you to jot down and describe this silly mistake as precisely as possible. By doing so, in the future, when you come across the same type of question, I want you to mentally remind yourself that you've made this mistake in the past and that you should take extra care and be more thorough when you're doing the working out and not make the same type of silly mistake again. Again, this applies to physics as well in terms of calculations and also for non-calculation silly mistakes. If you've forgotten the direction for a vector quantity, for example, this might be for magnetic field strength, in the future, whenever you're writing magnetic field strength, you should make a mental reminder that it is a vector quantity and you should also include a direction. So just to reiterate what I said, you'll find it very helpful in reducing your number of mistakes if you can identify and describe the type of silly mistake because that will allow you to make a mental reminder in future assessments when you come across the same type of questions. Now, of course, ideally in an exam condition, so for example, in a HEC exam where you're given three hours, if you have spare time at the end of the exam, it is very important for you to check these types of questions where you've made silly mistakes in the past. So if you're a person who's made silly mistakes in equilibrium constant calculation in chemistry or projectile motion calculation in physics, you might want to spend that spare time checking these calculation questions if they come up in the exam. The last piece of advice I have for you when it comes to silly mistakes is attention to detail during practice when you're doing your practice exam papers. I see this very often. When students do their school trial exam papers, they don't take it seriously. They tell themselves, oh, it's just a practice. And when they make a silly mistake in the practice papers, they comfort themselves by saying, oh, that's okay. In the real exam, I'll be more careful and I won't make that mistake. I think that's not the right attitude towards making silly mistakes in practice. Practice papers can be made more beneficial if you as a student treat them as the real exam. If you make a silly mistake in a practice paper, you should be honest and realistic with yourself because you're probably going to make that same mistake in the real exam. So when you're doing practice papers, I want you to be as attentive and careful about making silly mistakes as you would be in the real HSC exam. Okay, moving on to the next topic, which is exam time management. Now, I think this topic deserves a video on its own, but I'll go through an overview of this issue and some of the strategies that you can start implementing to help you manage your time better in the HSC exam for chemistry and physics. The first strategy is very simple. When you're doing practice papers, practice under time conditions. So that means you give yourself five minute reading time and also three hours of writing time. In addition to the time conditions, I want you to also try to simulate the environment in which you're sitting in the exam. So maybe you want to start the exam at the same time as when the real HSC exam will be. Maybe you want to clear your entire table and only have the stationery and equipment that you will need in the real exam. All of these things will do a little bit extra to help you feel the pressure that you will get in a real exam setting. And this is quite important when it comes to time management because a big part of managing time properly is being able to 
strategize and adapt in a high pressure setting. Now, although five minutes is not very much time compared to the whole duration of the exam, if you use your reading time effectively, it will make a pretty significant difference in how you tackle the exam and ultimately your overall time management in HSC chemistry and physics exams. I talk about time management and how to use reading time more effectively in their own videos. Now for both HSC chemistry and physics, 20% of the exam is allocated to 20 multiple choice questions, which is worth one mark each. Because the multiple choice question is only worth 20 marks, you need to be very conscious about how much time you're spending on these questions. Nessa usually recommends spending 35 minutes on the entire section of multiple choice questions, which I think is fair. But far too often, students lose track of the time and end up spending more than 35 minutes on a multiple choice question. And some of these students may not even finish the questions properly and be able to score full marks on the multiple choice question section. So when you're doing your practice exam papers, I want you to be extra conscious about how much time you're spending on each multiple choice question and overall. And I want you to also record down the total time you've taken during the exam on the multiple choice questions. If you don't write this down during the exam, I find that students often forget how much time they spent afterwards when they finish the practice exam. This last advice more applies to written response questions. Now there's usually about 15 written response questions for chemistry and physics, and these are numbered from 21 all the way to probably 35. It doesn't mean you have to do them in order. During reading time, you should use that time to start prioritizing the questions that you want to do first and the question you want to do last. This way, you can avoid leaving a very difficult or unfamiliar question towards the end of the exam when you will feel more pressured and stressed due to the lack of time and also the difficulty of the question you're encountering. I'll discuss more about this in detail and how you can prioritize different questions in their own videos. Now, once you've gone through all of your areas of weakness, and you've listed down all the strategies and ways you can resolve these issues, you want to put them all together and make a study plan that is realistic. If you're watching this video right after the trial exam, chances are you will have a bit more than two months between now and when the HEC exams will be for chemistry and physics. At the time of recording this video, chemistry and physics HEC exams are generally scheduled at the end of the HEC exam period. And this is usually at the end of October or the beginning of November. A lot of students think that because these exams are towards the end of the exam period, they will have more time to study for them and therefore they start getting a bit lazy and complacent during the time right after the trial exam period. If you're one of these students and you're watching this video, then you're already doing the right thing. Because let me tell you, even though chemistry and physics exams are towards the end of the exam block, you actually don't have that much extra time. And this is because you want to spend time studying for the other subjects that are at the beginning of the exam block. For example, English. Everyone needs to do the English, paper one and paper two. So you want to allocate at least a week to study for the exams that come before chemistry and physics. This time should not be included when you're making a study plan for HSC Chemistry and Physics. So my general advice when it comes to developing a study plan is to always underestimate how much time you have rather than overestimate. You want to do most of the preparation in August and early September in order to give yourself more time and more breaks between exams when the exam block actually starts in October to November. Now, I acknowledge that it is important for you to take a short break after your school trial exam because it would have been a very stressful and busy period, but don't take a prolonged break. Get back into it, develop a routine around your study plan for all your subjects, not just your chemistry and physics, but I recommend prioritizing chemistry and physics during this period so that you feel less stressful when you're preparing for your other subjects when it gets closer to the exam block. 
I think this way of prioritizing your exam preparation is quite useful because this way you're not cramming all of the things that you need to do during that one to two week period before your chemistry and physics exams. Now, regardless of what issues you're having and what your areas of weakness are, you should ask for help and use the online resources you have available to you. And this not only applies to academic support for chemistry and physics, but also emotional support as well as a source of motivation that some of you might need after receiving disappointing or underwhelming trial exam results. And you can seek this support from not only your family and friends, but also teachers at the school who have gone through this period with many, many other students before you. And when it comes to online resources, there are plenty of very good YouTube videos for chemistry and physics. And of course, if you're watching this video, you should be aware that we also offer HEC specific videos free to all students. On top of the free videos, if you want questions that are specific to the videos, you can also access our pay products, which include the topic tests for each module, as well as practice exam papers that will offer you difficult and unfamiliar questions to help you better prepare for the HEC exam. Now, the final point I want to make is regardless of what study plan you have and what situation you're in after the trials have concluded, it is very important to stay healthy and manage your stress properly by having a good diet, adequate amount of physical activity and exercise, and having a proper sleep schedule. Although these points are quite cliche and you may have heard about this many, many times from your teachers, from your family, I think it's important for me to highlight the importance of having a good diet, adequate exercise and sleep because students tend to neglect these things when they undergo stressful times as they think they need to spend more time on studying and less so on diet, exercise and sleep. Now what you don't notice is that these three things, they affect each other and more importantly, your productivity throughout the day. If you don't eat well, if you don't sleep well, and if you don't give yourself the necessary breaks for your leisure activities and hobbies, you will not be as effective at using your time when you're studying. Now, you may not be conscious of this, but numerous studies have shown that if you have a good way of managing your stress by doing these three things properly, you will be a lot more productive at executing your strategic study plan. Hey everyone, if you found this video helpful, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Want even more? Become a Patreon member for early access to videos, exclusive Discord discussions about questions on chemistry and physics, and live preparation sessions for your exams. Don't forget to head over to our website for topic tests and practice exams to further improve your understanding and learning.